Hello again. Welcome back to the channel. We're back for a new challenge. Today we're traveling in time to 2004, where it all began for Lionel Messi, and we're going to try and beat his goal scoring record from that season. That's right, after a painstaking process, I once again have a functioning copy of Football Manager 2005. Once again, we re entered Barcelona as club manager. Things were slightly different for Barcelona back then. Before 2004, their last league triumph was in the 1998-99 season. In those years in between, they failed to win any major trophies. However, this season would be a pivotal turning point in the history of the club. From this point on, for more than a decade, they would go on to dominate Spanish football. But without further ado, let's get ourselves to Catalonia. Welcome everyone to FC Barcelona. Some very familiar names in here, as you can see. Iniesta, Xavi. Poyol, Ronaldinho, Eto, Deco, Rafael Marquez, the list goes on. Overall, a pretty strong squad, and somehow we need to find a starting place in it for 17 year old Lionel Messi. If you haven't already watched it, I did a similar challenge on a different video with Messi in the 2011 12 season, where I tried to break his goal scoring record from that season. So feel free to check that out after this video. That version of Messi was the complete football player, essentially. 17 year old version of Messi. Well, he's just not quite as developed. So here he is. And attributes wise, well, he's not world conquering just yet. Technique 9, dribbling 10, passing 8, finishing 3. His mentals and physicals are pretty good, but I think this is going to be slightly more challenging than last. The only redeeming aspect, though, is for this, for this challenge, we're targeting a total of one goal and assists for the entire season, because that's what Messi achieved in 2004 5. A little bit more manageable than the 116 we were targeting in the 2011-12 season. Tactically, we're going to line up something like this. Valdez in goal, back four of Van Bronckhorst, Ed Mielsten, Poyol, Belletti. The four ahead of them will be Messi, Javi, Thiago Motta and Ludovic Juli. Finally up top will be Eto and Ronaldinho. I'm putting Messi on the left wing as for some reason on the game he's list listed as a left winger. Attributes wise, he's way below this level. So I don't want to play him out of position as well. Finally, just a few house rules before we get started. For this experiment, I'm not just going to simulate the season as I think that's pretty lazy. I'll be there every game doing the tactics and substitutions. Similarly to last time, I won't be making any transfers. I'm going to keep the team exactly the same as it was for the 2004 5 season at Barcelona. Finally, for this challenge, I won't be taking over the Argentina national team. Back then, I don't think Messi was starting every game, so I don't think it would, be, it would be very accurate for this experiment. And on that bombshell, I'm going to get into the season. Let's reconvene at the halfway point and see how things have been going. That's if I haven't already been sacked for dropping Deco for a 17-year-old kid. <laughs> Six months have now passed. We've reached the winter break in Spain, and it's been a tough season so far. So far, stats-wise, in 17 starts and 7 substitute appearances, we have 0 goals and 2 assists for Messi. I've mainly been playing him on the left wing. We have had our fair share of injuries though, so for some games he's had to play as an attacking midfielder. We've already eclipsed his assist stats for the 2004-05 season, as in reality he didn't get any. We still don't have any goals though. In 2004-05, in nine appearances, Messi got a single goal. Those appearances did all come in 77 minutes of action though, so not a bad goal to minute ratio. On previous videos, I've spent a while deciding which highlight to use of Messi's from the season. Sadly, this time, we won't be afforded that luxury. His first assist came against Ivar in the Copa del Rey. Xavi played the ball ahead of him down the line. Messi broke into the box before putting a perfect cross to Ludovic Juli to make it 3-1. His second assist came in the Champions League. Messi involved in the build-up here. It was a nice effort by Thiago Motta before the rebound fell to Messi. Before he could do anything though, he was clattered by the Pauk defender. Penalty for Barcelona. The penalty was then converted by Giovanni Van Bronckhorst. Barcelona. Here is Messi's form so far this season. As you can see, it's not been bad, averaging above 7 overall. 
One issue we've had, though, is his stamina rating of eight. He literally can't play 90 minutes two or three times a week. I've had to sub him in and out at times when his condition gets down into the 50s and 60s to avoid in injuries. Team performance-wise, things could be going a lot better. We're currently sitting in fourth place in the league. In the Champions League, it was a torrid campaign as we finished third in the group and are now set to face Dynamo Kiev in the Europa League or the UEFA Cup. In the Copa del Rey, though, we're, things have been going better. We're, we're set to face Ria Cravito in the next round. I'm now going to play through to the end of the campaign. Hopefully we can find that elusive goal to at least equal Messi's record from that season. I'll see you shortly. So then, summer has arrived in Catalonia, and with it the end of the football season. It was a long, hard season. In the end, Messi ended up making 52 appearances, with 37 starts and 15 substitutions. But how did he do goal contribution wise? In the end, not too badly. After a very slow first half of the season with just two assists and zero goals, he ended the season with two goals and 12 assists, meaning a total of 14 goal contributions. Proportionally, he did a, he did a lot better in cup competitions, recording eight assists in just 12 starts. Both of his league goals came in La Liga. As you can see, it wasn't all plain sailing. By the end of the season, Messi, amongst many in this Barcelona squad, are now unhappy. Apparently, Messi felt like I was overplaying him. Not that he can complain about that anymore. From playing through the whole season, I can see why Frank Rijkaard decided to slowly integrate Messi into this team. Not only from an exhaustion perspective, but also in a lot of games, Messi was relatively ineffective. I think towards the end of the season, he was definitely improving, but at the beginning, it was tough going. Competitions wise, we finished the league in second place, unable to match Barcelona's actual league victory in 2004-05. After our Champions League elimination, we progressed to the UEFA Cup quarter-final against Valencia. Unfortunately, they went on to eliminate us. The silver lining of the season really was our Copa del Rey victory, beating Betis in the final. Messi played well throughout the cup campaign, putting in some of his best performances. Speaking of which, let's get over to some highlights. This was Messi's first goal of the season for us, a crucial last-minute winner away against Racing Santander. A great cross by Gabri, and a nice finish there by Messi with his head. One of his more crucial assists for the season for us is here, where he takes the ball from Silvino before beating Ivan Helguero and squaring the ball to Samueletto, who finished. This is one of my favourite Messi assists of the season. Here, Valdez plays the ball long before Larson wins the header. Messi breaks onto the ball, then plays a through ball back to Larson, who finishes. This goal came in the Spanish Cup semi-final. Ronaldinho plays the ball out wide for Messi. He beats Fabio Aurelio with a great cross, finished in the middle by Larson. And this was Messi's final goal of the season. A nice cross in by Julie to Thiago Motta on the edge of the box before he plays it to Messi, who finishes. And on that high point... That will be drawing today's video to a close. I enjoyed making this video of hypothetical. How would Messi have performed at that age for Barcelona, playing week in, week out? And at the age of 17, Messi was an unbelievable talent. But it's how these talents are cared for which will truly determine what kind of career a player goes on to have. Luckily for Messi, he had the faith of a great coaching team, of not only Frank Rijkaard, but also his assistant, Henk Ten Kates. I'll leave you with some of the Henk's words from Messi's biography. When he started to play, his level of achievement would go up and down, but that didn't bother us, because we could see there was a young boy who had extraordinary qualities. It's logical that a player of 17 should lack consistency. I honestly think if they hadn't nurtured his talent so well, a lot of things could have gone very differently in Messi's career. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video.